has turned out to be quite an unstoppable day. And with this track, we are on to our penultimate uh, session, which is a spotlight session, technology to the rescue. Well, what are the ideas? Uh, what's the tech and innovation aspect involved when we talk about scaling the startups? Sanjeev Banwa, the co-founder and CTO, Misho, will be in conversation with our chat moderator. Of course, uh, Sachin Chawla, we will be welcoming you once again. You're the country manager and head digital native business, AI SPL. Well, over to you both for the chat. Thank you, Shika. Thank you, Shika. Thanks, and welcome, Sanjeev. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, we have a very special guest with me today, Sanjeev, who's the co-founder of Misho. Um, an exciting startup, you know, the poster child of uh, social commerce uh, and doing some really great things. Uh, we're going to talk today about innovation, technology and scalability. We have like 20 minutes, so, you know, we'll try and make it as exciting as possible. Um, let's, let's start, Sanjeev, with, uh, you know, something that I always had a question in my head and I thought I'll ask you, you know, on a public forum rather than on a one-on-one -on -one chat, uh, is... Uh, um, you know, you are a poster child of social commerce. It's not easy. And, you know, a lot of the products that you have on your platform are non-branded products, um, which means, you know, you've, you have scale, you have millions of users. It's not easy to do. You know, there's this trust deficit, you know, that's always there, more so in non-branded products, right? So, uh, but you have overcome that, you know, uh, in, 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 in as you have scaled. Can you talk a little bit about how was that and what are the strategies you adopted and what is this role of technology in, in, in overcoming that? Yeah, first of all, hey, hey, everyone. And thanks, thanks, Sachin and team for having me. But yeah, great question, Sachin. And uh, it hasn't been an easy journey, so to say, uh, because, of course, you rightly mentioned into an unbranded segment problem becomes even more complex. Uh, and there, it has been a journey for us as well, which is in the beginning, we we're doing things differently. So specifically, when we started this, essentially for people who don't know, like Misho is a marketplace between suppliers, basically. And on the other side, we have entrepreneurs, consumers, essentially e-commerce for the next 500 million, right? So, and uh, our vision is to enable 100 million small businesses in India to succeed online. And hence, we deal in, in with a lot of unbranded products. So when we started this up, right, uh, when we had like, let's say, hundreds of orders on a daily basis, I think in the beginning, when you're trying to build a marketplace, making sure you bring in supply, which has credibility, where you maintain the quality, et cetera, is of prime importance because only it's a chicken and egg problem, right? And there we try to kind of, in the beginning, did start with a lot of manual interventions, also to get hang of the problems that can happen in the different scenarios which will exist while trying to build this marketplace, right? And over time, very soon we realized, uh, okay, these are the standard problems which are associated with building such a marketplace, non-branded segment. And then we started applying technology. And there, of course, uh, we did a bunch of things. Um, one is, and of course, there's been a lot of learning, but whenever we onboard a new supplier or a new product, we do some sort of beta testing there, which is we try to scale this entity in a very limited way, try to see the impact of this new entity on the platform, whether it is product or a new supplier. We use leverage ratings and reviews, real images a lot in helping users trying to make the right decision, right? And over time, we have built a lot of advanced personalization algorithms to ensure there is like a balance between fairness, which is every supplier getting a right opportunity to surface their products. And on the other side, quality, which is making sure like quality filters are applied wherever appropriate. But having said that, our business model itself has been designed in such a way, which interestingly solves this problem quite a bit. So uh, most of our users are entrepreneurs, right? So who then go, go on and sell their these products with their end customers. So most of these are uh, housewives, for example, right? from below tier one cities, they have the, their own network on WhatsApp. They're essentially targeting people who are online, so to say, which is they're using WhatsApp maybe or Facebook, but they're not comfortable in buying online. And there, this entrepreneur or the ecosystem calls them reseller plays a very important role in building that trust because she's the face of this entire supply for this end customer. 
No, that's very interesting. I never thought of it, you know, this way. And congratulations to you, what you're building and and the vision, which is really bold and um, uh, very aspiring. Uh, my next question um, to you is um, a little bit on technology. You know, um, specifically, you have you are you've been cloud native, and you know, and you have really used the power of cloud to scale the business very effectively. Um, a lot of benefits of cloud are are spoken. You know, this in the last section also we spoke. It'll be good to get, you know, some practical examples and tips from you on, um, as you talk to some of the, you know, new startup founders and the audience here on, on the benefits of, you know, you had from day one on going on cloud and AWS and harming the potential to the fullest, you know, given there's so many services and how do you use them? How do you put a governance around them? You know, a little, little, little bit of flavor there. Yeah, sure. I think few things which have stood out in Misho's journey and where, uh, I would definitely say our choice of the cloud provider has been played a very important role, say pivotal role as well. Um, so Misho has essentially been data driven right from day one. Like we had behavioral insights integrated into our uh, entire tech stack. Um, and because we were kind of trying to solve problems which had never been solved before, which is trying to solve social commerce in India, but not have any parallels. I think solving a lot of these hard problems required innovation, required experimentation mindset. And there, I think from the beginning itself, we are able to, for example, integrate our, create a fundamentally scalable AV platform, I would say, which in the in its early stages was de highly dependent on Redshift for identifying which all audiences to run this experiment on. How do you derive insights of, out of an experiment and easily change your experiments or take decisions based on this data? But I think apart from this entire data-driven innovation that we were able to kind of uh, uh, do because of uh, our entire ecosystem around AWS, I think few things, are, things have definitely stood out. Like in the early stages, you don't have a dedicated DevOps team, right? Because it is just like it's a small team. You have some limited resources uh, or financial constraints there. So you'll always have probably engineers taking care of everything end-to-end not having a dedicated team of engineers looking at DevOps, for example. There, I think the simplicity of AWS console has stood out. Like I've seen freshers or not even freshers, like engineers who have not worked on this DevOps side of things directly, getting ramped up in a matter of one or two days, not even taking longer. They being able to run their own servers instances themselves. I think that has definitely been an important lever for us and helped us in kind of being able to move faster. I think beyond that, when we scaled, right, uh, when we started to build this entire DevOps team, of course, AWS expertise is out there. There's a lot of people out there who have AWS expertise, and uh, that has definitely helped us in ramping up our entire DevOps charter as well. And the last point, which is, of course, AWS has like huge, I'd say, like catalog of services, right? Uh, you have you solve each and almost every use case, right, for all the standard tech stacks that you have out there. So. I think that has definitely been helpful for us and availability, I don't think has been a problem at all for now, until now. Yeah, yeah. You, you also spoke about being a data-driven organization and, you know, uh, in your, right from the start. You also, uh, you know, uh, working with you, obviously, I know that you, you really use data and it's inside club with machine learning very effectively for various use cases, you know, you... We use some of um, our services like SageMaker and, and and things like that. So you know, and at the same time, you know, there is a little bit of skepticism. You know, if you go in the market, and you know, the, is machine learning hyped? How much of it is hyped? How much of it is real? You know, it'll be good to learn. You know, good to learn from you, and if you can talk to the audience and how how do you use it, and how much of it you think it is hyped, and how much of you think it's practical. No, I think in our case, our journey has been pretty interesting. I think data science, practical applied data science started in Misho about a year back. And since then, we have seen huge benefits out of it. So we started with trying to solve. So in our unbranded segment, right, you have this infinite pool of products. Your data is pretty sparse because you have a lot of products getting sold on the platform. It's not like you'll have like some specific brands getting sold with still personalization is still easier, right? So there, I think when we're able to do this personalization, which is personalizing the feed of every user in the app, uh, there we saw up to 50% uplift in orders per user, which is like a huge metric, right? 
and so definitely personalizing itself as a charter has been kind of pretty successful i would say uh, in making in leveraging data science algorithms but even beyond that uh, like uh, we we try to and we have recently built one image engine because in e-commerce you want to kind of derive a lot of insights and push it back to for example your search systems or trying to understand what type of kurti this is for example beyond color like patterns or neck uh, neck pattern etc right so even there we have been able to we have seen quite a good success there and i think aws services specifically sage maker has definitely helped us a lot so definitely helps you in kind of taking your models to production and even beyond that like uh, for us specifically we have leveraged sage maker for two use cases one was so in e-commerce in india right uh, you end up seeing a lot of order rtos which is orders getting placed but end customer doesn't accept it and hence it travels back to the origin and someone ends up bearing that cost right which can be classified as some sort of order fraud but basically trying to predict this rto behavior that has led to 10% reduction in rto and all of this obviously was built on top of sage maker which is like a huge benefit i think we recently started experimenting with search query intent detection and even then there like we did quick hacks to kind of do that using sage maker and we have already seen great results in our long tail of queries on the search side i think another service which we use uh, for ds in aws is forecast where we try to predict the inventory again same problem which is scarcity of data etc but keeping all of this in mind we are able to kind of predict this inventory uh, for each supplier or the demand for each product on the platform in a fairly accurate manner which led to lot of reduction in for example out of stock uh, that we see on the platform to up to like 20 or 30% reduction in out of stock percentages uh, in fact this led to suppliers bringing in like restocking the supply uh, by at least 20% which then means which kind of shows the success of adoption of this feature right because we are able to fairly accurately predict it suppliers love this feature because they're now able to not have to kind of liquidate lot of inventory because we we are able to predict what products are going to work well that's uh, the the awesome can you also talk a little bit i'm going to probe you a little bit um how easy it is you know to build these models you know just for the audience and you know like how how much time does it take to really build these models and you know go product go production and reap the benefits of it no i think good question there so i think really the time taken depends on complexity of business use case but having said that data science has evolved and and has reached a stage where you'll have standard algorithms solving all standard business use cases so for example if you want to go deeper into personalization like cf for collaborative filtering is one standard algorithm which everyone uses right and then you customize on top of it apply real time lens there uh, but uh, i think broadly the difference or the real effort goes into figuring out what problem are you trying to solve what metrics are you trying to optimize and what are your check metrics so when you when we for example did this personalization we had to come up with one metric which you know make sure it defines the success criteria of this personalization is it going to be your ctrs is it going to be your uh, orders from that real estate is it going to be overall upliftment of orders because you are now showing relevant stuff to to your user right so i think identifying that metric is important then i think next biggest problem is trying to figure out what features to include and while your standard the feature selection algorithms will help you um um identify those features to some extent but i have seen the right business alignment of your ds teams helps a lot there because there there a lot of underlying insights which are there concentrated in different business areas and unless you are or unless the team is closer to these insights or in a way are closer to the users as well we even have like user first being our one of the primary values and there we end up or our team ends up talking to our users directly as well to understand like what are their problems but fundamentally having those insights helps a lot in identifying what all features to include and what not and even trying to figure out when an experiment doesn't work why it doesn't work so having building all of that background is what takes time for us like personalization was a long journey i think it took us about 3 months from the day we started 
to the day it showed results and we scaled it to 100%. Of course, EB etc. You'll have to do always, but I think it was a three month journey. And that was bit after we had this entire team of people or whatever three three or four DS folks working on it who had already had good insights about the user. But I'd say like building those insights is the the core of the problem. Yeah, it's. Um... It's uncanny you say three months is a long time. You know, when I started my career in IT, three months you used to get to get servers to your home or your data center. Exactly. You know, so we are able to <laughs> enough now scale. Yeah. So you've certainly moved uh, leaps and bounds. Let's talk a little bit. You, you all, you, you spoke a lot on experiments and you know the ability to do experiments and. You know, um, that's key to operate in the digital world. You know, the ability to do a number of experiments, the ability to then f- fail fast and fail with the, you know, least amount of cost because if you're failing with a large amount of cost, then that will become prohibitive. And that's also one of the things that, you know, cloud obviously brings to the table because, you know, you can do multiple experiments and, you know, then fail fast and move forward. Um, tell us about some, you spoke a few, tell us some of the innovations that Mishu has carried over the years and, you know, that, that you really want to talk on and uh, how technology and cloud help you. We had to apply our first principles mindset. There is no parallels out there. So I think that inherently that Bay team has been built. Like in the beginning, we had a lot of ex-entrepreneurs who were part of the team trying to solve hard problems there. Over time, we have, uh, so there's one interesting value that we have incorporated into our mantras or the values is that we have, which is speed over perfection. If you're trying to solve hard problems, that experimental mindset has to be there. And if you want to leverage that experimental mindset in the right way, I think figuring out real MVP, which is probably an art, like there are multiple ways of validating or in- 